Pat Ellis has been a board member of ours for a long time. She's worked on many different issues. She's got a great bio. I hope that you'll look at it. She was very instrumental in the early 2000s of getting rid of Channel One. She's the lady. Um, she's worked with a lot of organizations just fighting for children in schools. In the last couple of years, she has, for Eagle Forum, been speaking across the state on social emotional learning, what it is, what you need to know, how dangerous it is, and all of these mental health counselors that are coming into the schools. Y'all need to know what your kids are being forced to do and forced to you know, fill out these surveys. Um, Pat, I'll bring this up for you, and everybody, welcome Pat Ellis. <laughs> First of all, wow, what a fabulous lineup of speakers. But one of the good things, I guess, is my remarks do tie into what Ed spoke about because what he talked about is happening in K through 12. Um, I want to uh, begin by saying my remarks are not a condemnation of all teachers, all schools, Many of the uh, teachers are actually in the fight with us, uh, some of them behind the scenes. <clears throat> Children are being harmed as we speak. They will be harmed next week. They will be harmed next month. And every month thereafter until summer vacation. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I'll speak more about that later. As you can see from this poster, social emotional learning has many tentacles. A critical race theory is so pervasive that I actually do an hour long um, presentation on that with videos. But just to throw out a few things to you, uh, in Selma they have a school that was used to be Clark Elementary School, it is now Clark Social Justice Academy. They have social justice circles. Then we have, um, Oh, Huntsville is a hotbed of critical race theory if you have any family in, in uh, Huntsville. We know that there are teachers that have signed a national pledge, teachers in Alabama, to teach critical race theory, even if it is banned by law. And I made a new friend from Auburn. You meet the nicest people at Eagle Forum conferences. And I met a new friend from Auburn that has given me a lot of information on what's happening in Auburn schools. So if you have uh, any child or a friend has a child in Auburn City Schools, uh, you need to really find out what's going on in those schools. Um, she told me this morning that they are really having lessons in the history class bashing Trump. Yeah. Um, now, uh, just to read out, I know you can't all see this. So we have systemic change, and this is actually an Obama era uh, reform and we all know what Obama said that he would fundamentally transform America and he's doing that and the schools are a great part of that then we have gen gender affirmation and I'll get into that a little bit more later collectivism um, GSA clubs and uh, just recently the Biden administration gave 85 million dollars in grants for schools to have GSA clubs. What are GSA clubs? Oh, I'm sorry, Gay Straight Alliance clubs. Uh, then we have diversity, equity, and inclusion, which Scott spoke about, and um, that's certainly also in K through 12. Sex education, my good friend Joy Wassell is here, and I'm so glad that she's speaking today because you're gonna be horrified by some of the things that are being taught in sex education in some of our schools and, and actually youth organizations. Um, and then, uh, of course, social justice. Now, um, today we have time for just a s snapshot on the dangers of social emotional learning and universal mental health screening in schools. So what is social emotional learning? Social emotional learning shapes a, a child's developing brain to accept a particular worldview. It is chock full of leftist ideologies, including privilege, 
racism, equity, gender fluidity. But one of the most serious concerns is how it's separating child and parent. They want SEL to be the source of children's values. This agenda has been part of the United Nations, UNESCO, a strategy for many, many years. Billions, and I mean billions with a B, of dollars are being spent to manipulate America's children away from the Judeo-Christian worldview. And I'm talking about federal government money, state appropriations, donations from the NEA, Bill Gates money, Mark Zuckerberg money, Warren Buffett's foundation, and every national education you can, uh, association you can think of. So speaking of education associations, just guess what the theme is for this year's National Council of Teachers of Math. Anybody? Scott? Any idea? <laughs> okay. Creating spaces for change through community. It starts with you. Okay. Um, you see, it's become more important for teachers to be good activists than good math teachers. A keynote speaker's address is climbing out of equity, traps and tropes. No, you didn't hear the word mathematics. All of the SEL programs we know of in Alabama are approved by the Collaborative for, Al uh, excuse me, Academic and Social Emotional Learning, known as CASEL. CASEL is a nonprofit funded by uh, corporations and the Novo Foundation. Novo Foundation also funds Planned Parenthood and Black Lives Matter. While I have no doubt our legislators are well-intentioned, I want to read this comment to you regarding CASEL by a State Board of Education member, a member who truly understands the dangers of CASEL, of SEL, excuse me. Quote, CASEL-approved programs are nothing without the legislative funding and mandates. Otherwise, it would only have an impact among counselors who agree with the dictates. Be sure to point out to your audience that the board has been required to include their ma mandates in our administrative code. They are also requiring these programs and new hires through legislative funding mandates. Don't let them blame the board. The board lies, uh, excuse me, the blame lies firmly in their laps, end quote. Like most programs sold to schools, SEL has good points that they convince schools that they have to have this program. You know, things like how to welcome a new child into the classroom or how to control your anger. But that shouldn't come with gender fluidity, teaching white children that they are oppressors and black children that they are victims, or that parents are roadblocks. Is there a solution to this global infiltration of local schools, excuse me, schools through social emotional learning? The answer is yes. The Federalist, a conservative online magazine, identified four character education um, programs that won't corrupt your child and has no ties to Castle or any other global organization. One of them is the Positivity Project. Now, Eagle Forum has been in touch with their CEO, Jeff Bryan. They offer 100% transparency to parents and stakeholders, and you will not see that in any other CASEL approved SEL program. Um, I'm happy to report that Robert Monk, Robert, you wanna raise your hand, of Alabama Students First and his team of researchers agreed to fully vet the Positivity Project our hope is that they give the program a thumbs up and we can promote it to the state board and local boards. It only takes 15 minutes a day. Now I wanna bring home to you what is actually taking place on the ground in Alabama schools, directly from teachers and parents. None of these uh, remarks that I'm making are from anonymous sources. And for further information, please go to the handouts uh, because uh, there's a lot of good resources in there from other organizations, too. On the first day of school, a teacher in Birmingham asked her students what pronouns they'd like her to use when addressing them. A parent of a Shelby County uh, student reported the same thing. 
We believe this is very widespread. A mom in Montgomery reported that her children's school uses the PATH SEL program. She pulled her daughter out of the school when she found out their third grade class, third grade, had a lesson in suicide prevention. Do you think that would weigh heavy on a third grade child's mind? Is there anyone here from the Morgan County or Morgan County Republican Party? Kudos to Morgan County. Uh, they passed a resolution opposing the Second Step SEL program in their schools. We know Second Step is also in Mountain Brook and Coleman County schools. We did get it out of Walker County Schools Eagle Forum at a presentation. Okay, uh, there's a group called Utah Parents United Against Social Emotional Learning, and they analyzed the Second Step curriculum. Here's what they found. Our overall concern is the undercurrent of social justice, race and gender, power and privilege, gender fluidity, collectivism, sexualization, and other disturbing ideologies flowing through the program. In addition, the lessons steer students away from parents or don't mention parents at all. Some examples. Who am I? In this video, they give uh, children and adults give their identity. One says, I'm a mother, another a doctor, etc. One student says, I am homosexual. No student says they are heterosexual. Pursuing my interest. This lesson gives a list of positive resources for students, includes friends, teachers, and mentors. Guess who's not mentioned? Parents. Parents. Another example is an eighth grade girl who doesn't think she should have to tell her dad where she's going or answer his texts. The lesson suggests her father is controlling and that for advice she should go to teachers, counselors, or other students. Another lesson gives students a scenario and then asks if they consider their parents to be an external or an internal roadblock. Values and relationships. This lesson ends with a slide to a national hotline, loversrespect.org. The slide shows pictures of gay and heterosexual couples. It talks about how you should be enthusiastic about sex. It refers viewers to places to get an abortion. By the way, this site is supported by a grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Now a teacher on second step, quote, I cannot in good conscience present materials to my students which teaches that their parents are roadblocks to their goals. Material which contains propaganda and encourages students to become activists. I am especially uncomfortable with the anti-family undertone. BLM propaganda is also in the video shown. It is biased. It has no place in our schools." End quote. A young teacher in an elementary school in North Alabama showed her uh, third graders a Black Lives Matter video. She didn't think anything was wrong with that. Now here's a very well articulated example of SEL in a Birmingham area school. A mom wrote this to the superintendent, quote, after the first day of school, my daughter came home telling us that her language arts room is covered with activism posters and that the teacher introduced herself again with gender identifying pronouns. In three days, I've had to discuss transgenderism and reinforce the truth that skin, skin color does not make you inherently racist. To teach my child to see white as inherently bad is the definition of racism. To teach my child to see men as bad is the definition of sexism. And to teach my 13-year-old about gender fluidity is unacceptable. Here's a quote from another parent upset about a political cartoon. Quote, the cartoon is neither sub subtle nor appropriate in a language arts class. The message, white men bad, Republicans bad, America bad, America bad. A mom with a third grader and kindergartner at a Hoover school said both of her boys were read a book during a unit on families that told them how families have two mommies and two daddies. As the mom stated, they are normalizing this behavior and excuse me, manipulating young minds. She told the principal while she doesn't expect 
uh, lessons to be biblical. She does expect them to teach academics and not include topics like homosexuality, transgenderism, and critical race theory. I want to mention here that the Alabama Department of Education has on their website the Alabama School Counselor Association Model Plan. It includes teaching starting in kindergarten, starting in kindergarten, remember developing, manipulating young minds, different family considerations, configurations, excuse me, hence the lesson on two mommies and two daddies. Some of you have probably heard Mike Parsons of Save Alabama Values. He does a deep dive into this. Uh, you can find uh, information on him in the handout. Nine-year-olds in the Hoover system were read a book called Say Something. The book was all about how good it is to protest. The pictures had people holding picket signs with activism messages on them that glorified protesting. And this was in the time of George Floyd riots. A mother with a teenager in North Alabama was angered when the civics teacher at her child's school told the class that they were brainwashed and have been since kindergarten because they say the Pledge of Allegiance. The mother said, we did not flee progressive California and change our entire life for our children to be taught this. Another teacher in the same school had a BLM poster with a raised fist in her class. A dermatologist in Birmingham posted a video um, on SEL. She gave several examples of how it has affected children, including a group of elementary school girls calling themselves lesbians. This comment from, is from a teacher in North Alabama, quote, the social emotional programs I am familiar with are reprehensible. These programs are fueling a victim mentality. Rather than helping these kids see their potential, we give them all the reasons society is so bad and hurting them. And she says, how tragic. Leader in Me is another SEL program. It's in 45 Alabama schools. I haven't seen any of the materials, but it is a Castle Select program, which is a very big red flag. Just to give you an idea of how controversial it is, here's a comment from a grandmother who left the Soviet Union in the 70s. Her son has a blog. His post starts out, after beholding the spectacle of dear leader, in, dear leader conformity, my mother offered her perspective to the school administrator. She told him, today I went to, to my grandson's school to take a look at their leadership presentation. What I saw shook me to the very core of my being. This leadership program is the most blatant and horrific example of brainwashing I have ever come across. And this from a teacher. Run, this is a true cult in which money, teacher time, families and resources are being wasted. I have never felt so helpless and forced to use language in my classroom on a day-to-day -day basis as I do now. As a Christian, I'm conflicted in teaching values that go against my own religion and that of my students. Another teacher, I teach middle school science. My displays and posters have been taken over by LIM requirements. Our reading and math remediation classes in the mornings have been converted to leader in me. This next program is probably the most disturbing as far as shutting out parents. Hartzell and 29 other schools use a program called BASE. Here's a quote from the local newspaper. BASE features video lessons that offer solutions to whatever the student might be dealing with. The courses cover more than 100 topics and help students plan ways to deal with the social emotional issues they're troubled by. Who needs parents? Who needs parents? There's also an app widely used called Rhythm, and that's with an I. Here's a quote from the hostel superintendent about Rhythm. Quote, whether they're at home or school, day or night, they can actually indicate when they need help and someone will respond, day or night. As a parent, I'd want to know 
who that someone is responding to my child day or night. So what do we know? We know that SEL is in all Alabama schools in some form. We know that there are some educators that share that worldview. We know that our universities that instruct teachers are woke. We know that Alabama passed HB 123 to allow mental health counselors in each school and will further SEL ideology. Many of you are familiar with Michelle Malkin. This is what she has to say about today's counselors. Modern school counselors are zealots bent on replacing parents and exposing your child early and often to anti-white, anti-American, and anti-nuclear family pro propaganda. The American School Counselor Association bragged openly about being master manipulators of children. Now, I attended the Montevallo School Conference um, for school counselors. At almost every meeting, the message was the same. If a child comes to you about their gender identity, you affirm. If they say they're a boy, they're a boy but they're a girl, and vice versa, you affirm. Um, Carolyn Stone, who's the ethics chairman for the National Association, was a guest speaker in Montevallo. Now, she was caught on tape, a video earlier in the year, telling school counselors to lie to parents. It's on a video. Uh, the bill that passed the Alabama legislature regarding mental health service does not have an opt-out provision for students 14 and over. This did not sit well with many parents. One parent sent the following letter to her school administrator. I need to make certain my daughter is opted out of mental health services. God put us in authority over our children, not the education system. We firmly disagree with the no parental notification language and therefore we no longer believe the intent is to partner with parents but to exclude them and create a relationship of distrust. We unfortunately learned last year that many teachers believe it's their responsibility to teach our ch children values rooted in the world with one-sided presentation of political views, worldly sex education, and disparaging white Christian Southern men as intrinsically racist. My daughter is confused as that includes her father, her brother, and her grandfathers. A 2022 study not con excuse me, commissioned by government or pharmaceutical companies reported, quote, universal mental health interve intervention in schools fails, worsens outcomes. These massive interventions may be rolled out with the best of intentions, but that doesn't mean they are effective, end quote. Dr. Karen Ephraim, a well-respected pediatrician, frequently testified before Congress. Regarding universal mental health screening and the treatment programs that follow, she states, these treatment programs will result in many thousands more children receiving stigmatizing diagnoses that will follow them for the rest of their lives, as well as being medica medicated by ineffective and dangerous medications. In the current cultural environment, mental health screening, screening could be used to label children whose attitudes, religious beliefs, and political views conflict with secular orthodoxy that dominates our schools. Parents and their private doctors should decide uh, whether a child has mental health problems. Uh, mental health diagnoses are subjective as admitted by authors of diagnostic manuals. The following is by Dr. Sheila Fury. She says student problems will not be addressed with me measures from Alabama HB 123. This legislation pours millions of dollars into mental health services for every K through 12 student. Every student, whether they're having any issues or not. It is a vehicle to patho pathologize normal development and will fail to provide for those in the greatest need. Intrusive surveys targeting a child's thoughts and feelings about their sexuality at development, developmentally inappropriate ages begins the process of indoctrination yielding early sexual experimentation. Each child's data is monitored 
and feeds the behemoth of SEL companies and agencies who purchase the data without accountability to parents. Alabama is one of 40 states that subjected their students to the following questions. During your life, with how many, with how many people have you had sexual intercourse? The response options include six or more. Which of the following describes you, heterosexual, gay or lesbian, bisexual, or other? They also ask students about suicide. How many times have you attempted suicide? And did you harm yourself enough to be treated by a doctor? Questions on drugs include, include spice, K2, black mamba, heroin, and China white, as well as questions on alcohol and breathing products from aerosol spray cans or sniffing glue to get high. Thank you. I'm sorry, Iva. No, no, no. Went over a couple of minutes. I know we're going to have a <clears throat> questions. <laughs> Come up if you got a question. Um, On Pixie. For those of you who, I just, while you're making your way up there, Carol, there, if, I don't know if you're familiar with what a privilege walk is or a privilege circle. They do, they're doing these in schools all over the place where they'll line everybody up on a line and then they'll say, if you came from a parent, two parents, you get a step forward. If you were raised by a grandma, you take three steps back. If you're white, take a step forward. If you're back, they're doing these. Okay, so then when they're done, they'll show that everybody who's privileged, who's white and has a normal, traditional kind of family, you are the oppressor. And those people behind you are the victims, and they're always going to be the victims. And this is what they're showing our kids and actually doing with our children. Okay, come on up, Carol. You know, I just have two comments to update what's going on at Baldwin Cali. Uh, in our school system, students are automatically opted in to mental health counseling and policies, which is a direct violation of HB 123. HB 123, as we best understand, requires the parent to opt the student in. What's happening in Baldwin is a violation to the law. Also, a parent has been denied the counseling curriculum based on copyright issues of the counseling curriculum driveway here to peer counselors. Carol, you're talking about all students, not just 14 and up, all students. Oh, that's against HB, you're right. That's against HB 120. Yeah, yeah. Just to up. Sounds like we might need to talk to the NG about that. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you for letting us know that. Um, okay, there is a law uh, that was introduced and in committee this week. It's by Senator Reed. It's a tr school transparency law. It's actually ADF really like Alliance Defending Freedom really likes the bill, although it doesn't have, they need some more teeth in it. But what it is, is it is making the schools have to provide their curriculum online so that people can see what their kids are coming up, you know, having to do. Mm -hmm. And that is great. We need to try to get some teeth in there, but that would help take care of that problem. So we need to keep watching that bill, get our updates and we'll keep you informed. Um, you may have just answered my question, but I'm a brain mother now, my children are brain, but now I have a two year old and I'm concerned about what she's going on with So when, he gets to the position of starting to go to school. How do we as parents or grandparents find out what the, what the school kids introducing to our children and similar to the student SEI? Well, there shouldn't need to be a bill passed for you to get that information, but it looks like that's the case. You have to go to the school and ask them what, you know, SEL program they're using. Now, with the handouts I have, um, Courage is a Habit is a group that has a, uh, just a list of questions for parents to ask school. So I would recommend that you go to that. But yes, go to the school and, you know, if you can take other parents with you, you know, there's always, um, you know, success in numbers. So I would recommend that too. If I understand it correctly, it's, uh, this is in throughout the entire study. Absolutely. And they, do they have a choice? And if not, how do we get it out of the schools? Well, as the local school um, has a choice of which SEL program to use. Now, the State Department of Education does not have a list of what all the schools use. They don't know. 
Um, what we're trying to do and what Brock Muck and his group are doing is if we can get the, if they agree that the Positivity Project is a good character education <laughs> program, and we can get that in all the schools and replace this garbage, because the uh, legislature has mandated and is funding SEL programs, so we need a great SEL program. Um, the Positivity Project was founded by two um, West Point graduates. I've spoken to Jeff Bryan, one of the founders, on a couple of occasions. I really believe that this is going to be a good product, but we want to make sure we thoroughly vet it because what happens is that the school is brought in programs that they didn't thoroughly vet, and I can't blame them because you have salespeople come in and you know, give a great sales pitch and don't give you all of the stuff that you need to know. So we're going to make sure that we don't do that. We're going to have it thoroughly vetted. <clears throat> but that would be the solution. That would be the solution. Because honestly, you know, there are some children that probably need character education. Their parents are drug addicts. Their parents are alcoholics or just don't care. You know, everybody in this room did that for their child, but that's not the world we live in. Not everyone does. Is it? Okay. Thank you, honey. Thank you. I think I'm going to my update. I'm so proud of